I speak Spanish too. I'm fluent in Spanish. I don't tell people that I like to surprise them. Because one of the perks about being black and being fluent in Spanish is occasionally you get to hear other Spanish people say racist shit about you right to your face. <laughs> That's always a good experience. Sometimes it could get weird. Like one time I was in an Uber and the driver was on the phone and he said something about me in Spanish. So when he got off the phone, I tried to let him know like, yo, I understood what you said about me. And then he tried to pretend that he didn't understand Spanish. I was like, but I just heard you. I heard you speaking Spanish and you're wearing three rosaries. I know you understand Spanish, Alejandro. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um. I'm in a good mood, um, too. I, like, a lot of people, I'm always in a good mood. That's kind of my thing. Like, I'm always happy. I'm always very positive. People think it's weird. A lot of people ask me, like, yeah, you're never angry. Are you in therapy? Like, how come you're never angry? I don't do therapy. This is how I deal with my aggression. You guys can try it if you like. Before I leave my house, I like to listen to at least 45 minutes of gangster rap music. That's black people therapy. That's how we work on our issues. Something about gunshots and police sirens. It's like a white noise machine for us. Makes us feel centered, you know? And I like old school rap. That's my favorite. I like old school. Like Tupac, he's my favorite rapper. I love Tupac. He's been dead over 20 years, but his music still makes you relate to things you've never been through. Stuff you never experienced, you hear Tupac talk about it, you're like, yeah. I know what you mean, Tupac. I get it. My favorite Tupac song is Dear Mama. Dear Mama, that's the song he writes to his mom. In it, he got a line where he says to his mom, he says, even as a crack fiend, mama, you always were a black queen mama. And I don't think my mom's ever tried crack. But that did not stop me from writing those lyrics on her Mother's Day card. Tupac had me inspired. I was like, wait till you read this, ma. This is from the heart. I mean, I mean this. I like to joke around with my mom like that because she doesn't understand. My mom speaks Spanish. That's her language because she was born in the Dominican Republic. But she moved to this country as a teenager. So she's been living in the United States for over 45 years now. Still don't speak a word of English. People think that's lazy. I think that takes skill. You know how committed you got to be? to live somewhere for 45 years and not pick up on a single word? That takes Navy SEAL level training. And I don't know why we say that to immigrants anyway. That's what we expect from immigrants. We're like, if you're gonna move to this country, you gotta learn our language and adapt to our culture. We say that, America, the country that won't adapt to the metric system. The international unit for measuring. We're like, yeah, we're not gonna learn that. And the rest of the world, they try to convince us. You ever traveled abroad? They try to talk you into it. They're like, look, kilometers is a lot easier. And we're like, yeah, but we already made our signs. I'm sorry. We can't change. You guys got to change. I'm sorry. I think not adapting to society is the most American thing you could do. And I'm a proud American. I was born and raised in New York City. And if I ever had to live in another country, I ain't adapting to shit. <laughs> I'm bringing New York City with me. I got a New York attitude. I can't live anywhere else. I could be in the nicest place. I could be in Canada. I get on the train pissed off for no reason. Like, yo, why nobody masturbating in here? Nobody masturbates on your trains? I don't feel safe. Take me home. I don't like it here. What are you guys hiding? I don't like it. I think that's one of the perks about being from New York City. A lot of people don't like New Yorkers. It's not that we're bad people, it's just we deal with so many weirdos on a daily basis. It's tough for us to care about what the rest of the country cares about. <laughs> like I travel now, I go all over the country. There's places in this country people are arguing about gender pronouns. That's ridiculous. People will argue with you about how you want to be addressed. That's crazy. In New York, nobody's arguing about that. You want me to call you they? I'll call you they. <laughs> There's a crackhead in my neighborhood I gotta call Beyonce. <laughs> That's what he go by. He told us one day at the bus stop. He was like, yo, my name is Beyonce. And then he started peeing on the bus. Everybody was like, oh, Beyonce, lemonade, we got it. <laughs> we don't got time to argue with you. We gotta go to work. This is New York City. <laughs> I 
call you whatever you want to be called. <laughs> one time, it got awkward. One time, this dude wanted me to call him King. He told me his name was King Jonathan. And I had no problems. Like, I'll call you King, but I wanted to make sure. I was like, are you sure that your first name is King? He got upset that I even questioned him. He was like, don't worry if my name is King, okay? I think a king is somebody who knows their worth, and I know how much I'm worth, so I consider myself a king. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> but Uber says I need to look for a Jonathan. <laughs> I don't know if you want to send them an email and let them know about your kingdom, but they probably don't know. Because you drive a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> That's why I love being from this city. A lot of people complain about the cost of living here, which is true. Cost of living is very high, rent is very high, but that's one of the benefits of having a high cost of living. Nobody judges you by what you do here. If you're surviving in New York, in New York people kind of just encourage it. Like, I right, get it how you could get it, you know? Like, there's this dude on my block that sells waters. He sells those dollar Poland spring bottles of water. He's been selling waters for like five years. I never bought a water from him. I always kind of just walk right by him. The other day I was walking by, he stopped me. He's like, hey man, do you live on this block? And I was like, yeah, I live right up the street. And he was like, then you should definitely buy a water from me because I could easily be on your corner selling drugs. I was like, you easily could be selling drugs? Then you should be selling drugs. I was like, this is New York City. You got to have ambition to make it in New York City. <laughs> 